The Supreme Court has just 10 days left on its calendar with a number of important cases like same-sex marriage that have yet to be decided. And a major one is being watched by politicians on the left and the right that could very well decide President Obama's legacy. And that's, of course, King v. Burwell. And in this case, Republicans may have their chance at a wish list of fixes they've always wanted to make to the health care law. The question is, if the Supreme Court does rule against the president, what will Republicans end up doing. The National Journal Sam Baker and Dylan Scott explored that in their latest article and they join us now. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So I'll start off with you. I'll just pick a name out of a hat. Sam, let's we'll start off with you. It, it seems that there is this GOP plan now that has sort of come out. Uh, there was a policy briefing this week to the House and to the Senate. Uh, Paul Ryan was really the person behind this. It reflects a lot of conversations they've had with governors and policy activists all around the country and they sort of settled in on this idea is that they would leave the subsidies in place that the six million people who do not have states that set up an exchange would lose if King Beaver well went in one decision through the end of the year and then it turns into a sort of block grant program what do we know about this well, this is sort of um, House Republicans' opening bid, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, this obviously would have to be negotiated out with the White House and with the Senate, um, where you'd need some Democratic votes to get anything through. But, but the initial plan that we've seen come out of the House really is sort of an everything for everyone uh, approach, at least for Republicans. Um, there's, it, it turns. Uh, a lot of Obamacare funding into a block grant. It sunsets after two years, so it's a really ambitious sort of opening bid, um, but probably not, you know, what you would actually see at the end of the day if, if the decision even goes that way to begin with. And Dylan, we should say that this is all something that could be fixed by a one-sentence change. And I covered the health care law in 2009, and the idea was always that these bills from the House, one from the House, one from the Senate, were going to go to conference. They were two different bills, and all these little problems are going to be fixed. And then Scott Brown happens, and then Nancy Pelosi essentially <laughs> has to get the Senate bill through the House. What do you see in terms of some of the major uh, stumbling points ahead? Because you, as you guys mentioned in your piece, you're seeing a movement now, we already have it. They want to get rid of the employer mandate the GOP does. They want to get rid of the inv individual mandate if this goes in one uh, direction. There are a lot of things that the president would probably not agree to. It might even end up saying, you know what, I'd rather keep the law the way it is in the states that actually want it than have it be gutted to the degree which you guys want it to do. No, that's right. And I do think that the politics of this are going to be really unpredictable. Um, but there's certainly going to be some red lines for President Obama, as you said. Uh, the individual mandate, the law, really can't function without it. Um, and obviously that's what the um, House Republicans have included in their mm -hmm. initial plan that they've released. So Republicans can probably get a lot. There are a lot of pieces of the law that you can sort of shave off while keeping its uh, core functions in place. Um, but obviously Republicans have signaled with this big um, opening plan that, that they're going to want a lot. And sort of the question becomes how much pressure can President Obama exert back on them by pointing out that all it would take is a one-sentence bill and there'd be no problems, subsidies keep flowing, and the law keeps functioning as it has thus far. And Sam, let's talk about the politics of that because I find this debate so fascinating. I've spoken to a lot of high-ranking Republicans that will all say privately they don't want this decision to go their way because at the end of the day, it is a headache for them. Uh, a lot of conservatives do not want uh, to make any changes. They essentially say, you know what, let it be. Then you also have these folks who are running from uh, blue states who are Republicans in the Senate. Mitch McConnell's trying to stay on as majority leader. A lot of them, especially you're seeing Ron Johnson, Wisconsin, sort of leading the charge, they want the subsidies to exist. So this has potential to divide the GOP into some very uh, difficult camps. It absolutely does. It really does. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people uh, are saying privately exactly what you're saying, that this isn't, yes, this would be an anti-Obamacare ruling. It would be bad for Obamacare. And Republicans could come out sort of in the first instance and say, look, we told you this law was poorly written. The Supreme Court agrees. That's fine, but it creates such sort of the orders of magnitude problems that it would create uh, just make it really messy. Uh, and you, you, if you want to reshape health care, winning the White House and keeping control of Congress, both of which seem like pretty realistic possibilities, would give Republicans a much cleaner opportunity to sort of take their time, 
map out exactly which sort of levers they want to pull, how one thing would affect another. You know, this is not a great opportunity to make good policy, and I think that is what is making the politics uh, so hard to predict and what's got a lot of Republicans so on edge. And Dylan, part of that uh, I think is reflected in the fact that this is not a one-size-fits-all approach. The politics are very difficult. It varies by state. Uh, and you don't have a lot of answers within the Republican bill that was put forward, or at least the conversations that about perhaps the bill that will emerge, about what happens to a state like a California that likes its, ex ex its exchange, what happens to them after 2015. Talk about that and to the sense that this can be very localized uh, in a lot of races, much more so than the health care law was before. It was sort of Obamacare bad or good. In this case, you can actually point to say, hey, in this state, this amount of people are going to lose this money. Uh, what this average is on $242 per month for subsidy. I mean, this can get very local in 2016. Absolutely. And you have some interesting dynamics. You know, Mitch McConnell's state, Kentucky, has set up right. its own exchange and will be completely unaffected by a ruling against the administration. So, and then you have folks like uh, in, in kind of purple states like Ron Johnson, as you said, Rob Portman, um, who are going to have a lot of constituents with their subsidies at risk. So a lot of this, I think, will come down to how much can Democrats and the president make that case that, you know, we're going to have this sort of two-tiered health care system where blue or purple or states that are willing to buy in a little bit to Obamacare are going to have something approaching universal coverage. And because Republicans won't fix it with a one-sentence bill, these other redder states are, are going to be left behind. Congress could fix something with a one-sentence bill, and they won't do it. <laughs> Shocking, right? National Journal, Sam Baker and Dylan Scott, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Great story.